years. Before coming over to SRO, I worked investigations for about 24 years doing violent crimes. I did a lot of child abuse, sex crimes, homicides, um, burglaries. So I have a little bit of a background as far as um, child investigations. Um, so that was one connection coming here um, is I already had a good rapport with the school system and with the guidance counselors in person. <laughs> you good? Sorry. <laughs> Um, one thing SROs do, we unlock car doors. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so Officer, <laughs> Officer Holland, he's going to do that for us this morning and let me get started. Um, a little bit about what we're going to talk about today. I don't know how your other guest speakers talked. Um, sorry. But um, I know that they talked about your career path. Um, I'm going to share with you kind of how the Sheriff's Office um, different careers we have at the Sheriff's Office, kind of like how to get started. Um, also, if you um, are interested in a criminal justice degree, the Sheriff's Association does offer a scholarship. Um, we do have the paperwork for that if you're interested. Another program that the Sheriff's Office offers that's not on here is we have a ride-along program. So if it's something that you think you're interested in and you would like to do a, a ride-along day, which is a six-hour shift, um, you would ride with one of our um, sergeants or lieutenants and um, you'll just answer calls and do things with them. You have to fill out paperwork, it has to be notarized. Um, even if you're 18, I think your parents still have to sign because you picked it up here at school. So. Um, I'm just going to go through a little bit. I do have um, bribery items here for questions, <laughs> um, but I, I understand most of the time you all have to develop a question, is that correct? Okay. Um, just be mindful of your neighbors. Um, if you have a question question that you think is sensitive in nature, that's fine. Um, don't give names. Don't give scenarios. Um, just, again, be respectful to who you're sitting beside. We, you know, we don't all know what everybody lives through, so be mindful of that. Also, if I cover something today or something that you need to talk to me about um, that you would like to talk outside of class, I'm always in law. Well, my office is in law. Um, I'm usually around there first thing in the morning, kind of off on campus and everywhere, um, but anybody can pretty much find myself or Officer Holland if you need one of us in a private nature too, okay? And I say it don't have to occur here. Um, if something's going on uh, off campus you, you think that you need to talk to somebody about or make us aware, um, we are a resource for that as well. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go over through the Sheriff's Office a little bit about our different divisions. Um, First, our division, we have a patrol division. What the patrol division is, is um, officers that patrol the whole county off, um, answering like 911 calls. So we have a dispatch center. They dispatch our officers to the call. Um, to be a patrol officer, that's- Patrol Office Ms. Holland or Mr. Nesbitt. Also, we have middle school tour tours here today, so yeah. um, they may come in and out. Um, as far as for to become a patrol officer, we have a rule you have to be 21 years of age. Um, then you have to go through the hiring process. You have to be, you have to have a high school grad, you have to be a high school graduate. Um, you do not have to have a college degree. However, with any profession, the more education you have, the higher you can go in life. Um, but for patrol, um, you would go through a hiring process, fill out an application, you gotta be 21. You would go to um, Criminal Justice Academy. Uh, we either go to Piedmont Criminal Justice, which is in Henry County, or Cardinal um, Criminal Justice Academy, which is in Salem. Um, the academy lasts about 22 weeks now, so you will go through weeks of, um, your first five weeks is pretty boring, it's mainly law, classroom stuff. Then you'll get into defensive tacti tactics, um, defensive driving, um, two weeks of firearms, two weeks of um, like tactical shooting, um, kind of like um, clearing buildings, things like that. You'll have a week of um, traffic law, which will also consist of um, tactics to pull over people, um, how to do felony stops. Uh, it's just a lot of, just the process of everything you would do as a patrol officer. Um, but you only, you know, again, you just have to have, has, you have to be a high school graduate and you have to be 21 years of age. Um, when you go through the hiring process at our department, you have to take a polygraph. And for, one, for who don't know, it's a lie detector test. 
Um, right now, I am the only polygraph examiner with the department. Um, to be a polygraph examiner, you have to go through um, academy for about 10 weeks. I had to go to Northern Virginia and live there for a while. Um, then, when I come back, I had to do a six-month internship. And then, um, sorry, I gotta answer this. I do apologize. Sorry. So, um, I'm gonna lay this in case they need me again. Um, so I'm a polygraph. So polygraph, and then I had to take a state license. Um, which I have to take an exam. It's about 300 questions pertaining to a polygraph. And what the polygraph does, it measures your physiological changes in your body. So in polygraph school, we had to learn things about how your body changes when you tell a lie, because as we're raised, most all of us are trained to tell the truth. And that's kind of human nature. So when you tell a lie, you have physiological changes in your body that you can't control, whether it's heartbeat, um, your breathing. Now you can control your breathing, but if you're taking a polygraph and you're controlling your breathing, then I'm watching you, um, you kind of like flatline if you hold your breath. I recently had a polygraph for actually a new hiree, and um, he wasn't breathing. And I kept watching, and I'm like, I knew, I was like, if he soon don't breathe, he's going to pass out right here on me. So finally I just stopped and I said, you got to breathe normal, because if not, you're going to get lightheaded and you're going to pass out in here. So the polygraph does measure the breathing. Also, like your perspiration on your fingers, you can't control that. Um, it also measures that. So just to become an officer, these are things that you have to go through. You have to also take a, um, you have to do an agility course. Um, I think they've actually backed it down to mainly just running, I think you do a mile and a half, and a, I think you've got to do it within 12 minutes now. Um, so that you, you go through the process. Now, in saying that, I've been there for 28 years. Could I do that? Absolutely not. I could 100 pounds ago, and 28 years ago, I did just fine. But with life, things happen. You have kids, you, um, you get older, things like that. But um, it is a process that you have to go through to get there. Um, now, we do have different divisions in our department, but mainly you start at patrol. However, if you decide you wanted to be, um, if you wanted to start younger, you can start in our uh, very exciting. That's very, that's a, uh, we have a jail, our jail facility, but I don't know. We had a hard time with the corrections. Here we go. Here we go. So if you wanted to start younger than 21, we do hire at 18. Um, some of you may know our most recent hire at 18 was Tristan Adams. He graduated about two years ago. Um, I think he's 20 now, but he started at 18 with our department. He is the most recent hiree that started that young. Um, so they, the department, the sheriff will hire at 18, um, but you still have to go through the same process as far as um, the agility course. You still have to take a polygraph. Um, you do have to go through the interview panel. So if you, you know, if you think that maybe college is not your route and you wanted to try criminal justice, um, they will hire you right out of high school as long as you meet all the standards. Um, and then, you know, you do have options to obtain a degree while you're working. But um, you can be hired at 18 as long as you make it through all the credentials for that. Um, we also have dispatch that will hire at 18. Our communication ops. Let me see here. I'll go down. I'm sorry. This is what our front of our jail looks like, which is real fancy and all. We take a lot of our prisoners now to the regional jail, which is near Dixie Caverns over in Rhino County, if you all are familiar. It's, it's a good little hall from here, but um, a lot of our, especially if they're medical um, inmates or if they're going to receive a sentence over 12 months, then they will go to our regional jail. We only um, keep trustees is what we call them here um, in our jail or either um, offenders that's going to um, have to go to court within 30 to 60 days. A lot of our um, the prisoners that have felony charges, they usually go to regional and stay there. Um, we just kind of ship in and out at our, at our jail for, uh, for the trustee program. And what the trustee program is, is it's someone that's received a sentence that's 12 months or less and they're allowed to come out of the jail 
to clean offices, to work at the rec department, um, mowing and doing things there. They can't be around children or not supposed to be. Um, they work at the landfill, they work at the um, animal shelter. So they are volunteering their services and it, and it does save, save the county quite a bit of money, but it, it also gives them the opportunity to come out of the jail. Um, they don't have to sit there all day. Um, but their sentence has to be under 12 months and it cannot be a violent offense for them to be able to come out and do things. Um, we have had some exceptions in the past, like if say you're 18 years old and you're driving down the road and you hit and kill somebody, if you're, say you're intoxicated or under the influence or something, um, and you could be charged with manslaughter, well at that point you could receive up to 10, 10 to 20 years in prison, um, which is something to think about. But we have had some offenders that they made a bad choice one night, affected their life forever, and the sheriff's given them the opportunity to come back and at least do the trustee program and work that way. Uh, but most of our offenders that are in the trustee program have a 12-month sentence or less. Also, if you receive over a 12-month sentence, um, you can go to DOC, which is Department of Corrections. Um, actually, one of our officers that filled in for me last semester, um, Officer Kenny, he's now going to DOC. So I was going to call him to get him to come in because he's our, one of our drug guys, um, just to talk to you all a little bit. But he's on his way out, so he's trying to get some cases finished up and things, but um, if you get a, over a 12 month sentence, you could go to the Department of Corrections to, to receive your time there. And I think that um, the regional jail, they also hire 18 and above as well. Does anybody have any questions so far? Are, in the Bridge to Gap program, is it only trustees? Yes, uh-huh. Um, or here's our Bridges to Gap. I, I, I don't, if I, if, if I show anything that upsets anybody, y'all tell me. Um, we are a small community, so some may, may know. Some, these are some of our trustees that are going to, um, they go to Franklin Heights three days a week. Um, they do some volunteer service there. They um, actually, uh, Officer Woldridge, you may know him. If some of you may, if he, he was an SR at the middle school several years ago. He was here too. Yes, he was. He is now an SRO at Callaway, but he's actually a pastor. So he actually helps with our program. Uh, the gentleman in the back in the brown shirt, he is Officer Sweeney. He retired from us, that's probably about five years ago now, but he is a mentor for uh, the Bridges to Gap. And what this program, program is, is these gentlemen are trustees. They made some type of mistake and they have decided that they want to get their life straight. And um, most of them go through different programs, but the Bridges to Gap also gives them the opportunity to go to church, um, intermingle with other people in the community um, to get them back on the right track um, to make better choices. So the sheriff, our sheriff started that here in our county. Um, and the churches have, you know, they've accept, you know, welcomed them in. Now, we again, they're called trustees because we trust them. Sometimes they make mistakes again. If you make a mistake in our jail with our sheriff, if you don't come back to our jail, you're shipped out. So he gives you one chance after that. What mistake have they made? Well, we had one gentleman just walk. He was meeting a friend mm -hmm. behind, behind the church yeah. and wasn't going to where he's supposed to be. Uh, that's an example. That's just one I think about. But there's others. Or if you get, um, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, a lot of these have to work as a trustee. Like um, some of them are uh, clean our cars and clean the buildings. They clean the buildings um, around our facility at the courthouse. So if they don't do and meet their standards, then they get lost. Like so. But that's just a program that you all don't want to be a part of unless you're a mentor, right? Because the Bridges the Gap, these, these are inmates, except for there's three in there that's mentors, other than that. Uh, so it's not something you want to strive for unless you want to be a mentor. <laughs> but they do have them. Um, again, for uh, if you would like a career path for in, in law enforcement, we also, if you're under the age of eight, I mean, over the age of 18, but under the age of 21, you can get hired at our dispatch center. And everything you hear on my radio is coming from our dispatch center. Um, so this is some of, she's one of our dispatchers here. Well, actually, I don't know if she's there. Um, 
But that's what our dispatch center looks like. Cool. Yeah. So, um, with dispatch, dispatch, dispatch is calls for for the here. You want to stand on this side? I'm sure. Using my PowerPoint. My hair might be the way. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're using. Light won't come. So with dispatch, they dispatch uh, fire rescue, they dispatch the sheriff's office, they dispatch the town PD. So if you're interested in a career path that you're not quite sure you want to go quite, you want to go right into law enforcement part, but you want the other side. Also, a lot of our EMS personnel, they start in dispatch. Um, a lot of our local volunteers, they've been a volunteer for a few years because you can become a volunteer at 15 at some departments. Um, and do it at, you know, as early as 15. Um, I think Lake Hill, you gotta be 60 on the fire department. But a lot of the programs, you can um, start there. And a lot of our EMS personnel, they come into communications and that's where they start and they just stay with their career path. But you can be employed there uh, between the ages of 18 and 21. Uh, uh, we have a criminal investigation um, division. Most of our criminal investigation, Investigators, you have to have um, at least 